Hello, I'm Ray with another midweek message. Can't believe it's Wednesday again already. Well, actually it's not. It's Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock. I don't know what the temperature is, but I do know that at night it has been absolutely freezing. Minus two, minus three. My little raspberry plants, they've got buds on them and little leaves coming out. Luckily, they seem to have survived the last two nights of pretty heavy frost. The wind has been from the east. I've been watching the flag. It's quite a wind from the east. The beast from the east. <laughs> Thanks to all those who sent me various headlines on their weather forecasts and, and news bulletins. Aren't headlines ridiculous? I've had a load of emails about not only weather forecast headlines, but the news. It's, it's almost fake news, the way they put some of these headlines. Anyway, the flag at the moment is from the... Actually, the flag isn't from the West, is it? The flag's from eBay. The, <laughs> the wind is from the West at the moment. It's not nice. We've got um, March. When's March? Any minute now, isn't it? Thursday, isn't it? Thursday is March. Tomorrow, in fact. You'll be listening to this on the 28th. Twenty. Oh, no, 29th. We've got 29 days this year. Get it right. Duh. Leap year, of course. I think the idea of the 29th, isn't it? Every four years, they add a day to put things right because otherwise it would all be unstable, out of sync, out of kilter and out of whatever else. It would be messed up, wouldn't it? Don't they adjust the clock, the atomic clock, by one second every million years or something? I don't know. You tell me. Raise rants at protonmail.com. I've been conducting a little bit of a survey from your emails. Re the seagulls. You heard them at the beginning of this episode. And some of you like the seagulls, some don't. So I'm making a little list of for and against. So far from emails, I've had three people against and 15 for. No, not 15 for, for. <laughs> F-O-R. So three people don't want the seagulls and 15 people do want the seagulls. So I shall carry on conducting my survey and I shall let you know the result, the final result, when the emails stop coming in. So what do you think? How about an email? Raise rants at protonmail.com. Do you like the seagulls at the beginning or do you not like the seagulls at the beginning? And now for something completely different, the breakfast table. Who remembers the breakfast table in the 50s and possibly into the 60s when it was all laid out nicely? Serviettes, serviette ring, teapot, as I mentioned last Sunday, teapot with its cosy, and the tea strainer, the sugar bowl with the sugar lumps, and the, the tongs for the sugar lumps, the toast rack. Who remembers the toast rack? That was nice. You put your toast in there. Milk in a little milk jug. Butter in the butter dish. Who remembers this? There must be some of you who are as old or older than me. I remember all this. It was lovely to sit at the breakfast table in the morning. It was refined, wasn't it? It was rather, not classy, not upmarket, but just rather nice to sit down at the table and have everything nicely laid out rather than the, bu <laughs> the butter in a plastic tub, the milk in the milk bottle, the toast, well, just thrown on a plate. <laughs> well, no, not thrown on it. I've nearly set myself off coughing then. I mustn't, mustn't laugh. I cough. I've nearly got over that. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? I can't remember. Friday came down with this cough and cold. and Oh, it was dreadful. By today, Tuesday, it's just about gone. So that was weird. I don't know where that came from. I think I mentioned that we went to the club. We won £75 on the, the music quiz, which was good. Back to the breakfast table. Wasn't it nice? Marmalade even, not just in the marmalade jar with a knife or a spoon sticking out of the jar and a knife sticking in the butter, you know, for the next person to use and the butter's all covered in toast crumbs and <laughs> just a terrible mess. The marmalade was in a little marmalade dish with a little spoon that you could spoon it onto your toast so you don't get butter in the marmalade pot. Because that's not refined, is it? Sticking your butter knife in the marmalade pot, then the marmalade goes off because the butter in there all goes funny and rotten and decays. Anyway, wasn't it lovely in the old days? I like that. Sadly, these days, everyone's in such a hurry, aren't they? You've got to rush off to catch the train or the bus. So you leave the house. There was an advert on telly, wasn't there? 
someone leaving the house, eating a piece of toast with one hand and a cup of tea slopping everywhere as he rushed down the front path in the other hand. That's not refined, is it? You don't do that. You don't rush out of the house eating toast and marmalade in the street. But here's the thing. I pity anyone that has to use public transport to get to work. Our trains are going on strike again. The buses cannot turn up on time because there's so much traffic, they're just gridlocked. If you want to go in your own car, forget it. Well, don't forget it. Just leave an hour earlier than you would normally because of the traffic. It is absolutely horrendous. No wonder people, I've seen people driving along drinking coffee. They stop at a, is it Costa or horrible stuff? They go and buy a cup of coffee in a cardboard cup thing that's horrible. And they're driving along drinking coffee. I don't think that's good because if they spill it, say they spilt the whole lot in their lap. Ouch. And they're driving. That could cause an accident, if, especially if you've burnt your legs. That'll do. <laughs> no, don't laugh. Don't laugh. I remember when I was young, they were talking about the rat race. And I wasn't quite sure what it was. If that was a rat race then, what do you call it now? A, a, a stampede. A, a rat stampede. I don't know. It's awful. Even in our little road... First thing in the morning, there's people rushing about. They're rushing around. They park here somewhere because the station, the railway station's around the corner. So they park somewhere here. They run. I've seen people running because they're late. I haven't seen them eating toast and having a cup of tea on the way. But they are running to the station. That's not a good way to start the day, is it? That is enough to cause stress, isn't it? Talking of stress, how are you? Thanks for all your emails where you listen to the various podcast episodes. Who is it? Um, Eric. Hello, Eric. Eric listens in a boat. Apparently he's got a boat. A long boat, is it called? I forget what you call it now, Eric. On one of the, the canals up, up north somewhere. You live on this boat. That's a far-flung place, isn't it? A boat on a canal. Well, it's not quite the same as the South Pole, but that's good. Thanks, Eric. So you listen to the podcast episodes on your boat. Where do you get the Wi-Fi connection from, I wonder? What was I saying? How are you? You're keeping well. Have you had a good week? Are you having a good week? Because it's going to be Wednesday when this comes out. I know that not everyone listens on the day the podcast episodes actually come out. Some people save them. Or perhaps they have to psych themselves up for it. <laughs> you have to build up to it. Oh, I have to listen to it. Oh, go on then. Let's turn it on. No, I'm sure you don't. I mustn't keep laughing. I'm sure you don't think that at all. A friend of mine popped round today and he gave me a Morse code key, which is rather nice. The type used in the Lancaster Bomber. Who remember? Well, he won't remember the Lancaster Bomber, I don't suppose. I don't. But I do like old things. It's Bakelite. It's probably worth quite a lot of money. Bakelite is worth money, isn't it? In the old days, everything was made from Bakelite. Well, not quite everything. Cars weren't, but milk jugs... Plates, when they first started having picnic hampers, they used Bakelite plates, Bakelite cups and saucers, hair dryers, hair tongs. All those sort of things were made from Bakelite. And it is collectible. It is very collectible. I don't know about my Morse code key. There we are, look. I haven't got a beeper. I'll have to plug it into a beeper so you can hear it. No, you're saying I don't want to hear your Morse code key. <laughs> OK, fair enough. The thing is with Bakelite, as far as I know, it is, what do they call it? Biodegradable. It does kind of fall apart in the end, as far as I'm aware anyway. No doubt you'll tell me if I'm wrong. Whereas plastic was when plastic came along. Oh, this is amazing stuff. Everything was made out of plastic. But the trouble is plastic won't go away, will it? You throw it in a field or in a landfill or wherever in the sea and it just stays there. Well, actually, in the sea, it is ground down, isn't it, to, what is it, micro beads or something, plastic? Then the fish eat those, then you eat the fish, then you've got plastic in you. I don't know. I don't know. Where will it all end? Shut the front door. I don't know what that means still. Someone the other day, I said, about this various sayings, I said, have you heard of shut the front door? They said, yes, it's the equivalent of saying shut up. So I think that must be it, that shut the front door. But does that mean the mouth on your face? You know, because that is the front door, is it? <laughs> I don't know. OK, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a good week, as I said earlier. Hope the weather's nice where you are. And I look forward to having a chat on Sunday. We'll have a chat on Sunday for an hour or so over a beer 
or a cup of tea or coffee if you prefer. Until then, look after yourselves, take care, do everything I wouldn't do or would do. <laughs> take care, bye-bye for now. Lovely talking to you.